Hello everyone, back again, and we got another major score here. So, this is a Sony 34XBR910, which I've been looking for a widescreen HD CRT for a long time, and I've finally, finally got one. And it was for free, too, with the stand, so right price, and it was close to my house. And yeah, so, but there is a story behind this thing. So as you may know, these things are insanely heavy and large. Like it's a lot bigger than it looks in this video. Um, they're 200 pounds without the stand, but thankfully the stand is removable as most models didn't even come with the stand. I think it was a add-on that you had to buy. But anyway, um, so the main problem with this thing was just being able to get it. So it was listed like a month ago on Market Facebook Marketplace. And it's just been a struggle. Like, we just, I, I just really didn't have anyone to help me really get it. I mean, it was just, that was willing to help me get it. And then eventually I convinced some people to help me. And yeah, it was definitely worth it. Um, the main problem was that the people who originally owned it were moving out and it was in their basement. So getting one of these up the stairs with me and one other person, it was going to definitely, we were just weren't sure if we were going to be able to do it. So we just, I just kind of wrote it off. You know, I was sad. I was like, dang, that was, you know, a good deal just to pass up on. And then eventually we wrote the guy again and he's like, well, we're going to be putting it out on the curb. You know, he gave us a date. I'm like, oh my God, okay, this is this is my chance. So we waited till the day, another like about a week later, go to the guy's house and luckily it was out there. So it was, it was very exciting. I brought my little tester there. I have a little like battery that I can plug these into and try them, you know, wherever I'm at. So I plugged it in, I tried it out, seemed good enough. And um, luckily actually one of the movers was willing to help us move it in the car. He literally, the funny thing was he, when we pulled up, he was just carrying this TV out by himself. Now, mind you, this is 200 pounds and absolutely massive. He grabbed it. There's these little handles, like, on the top here somewhere. Or they're actually on the sides, like this. He just had one hand on each side, just picked it up by himself. He carried it up from the basement by himself. So that guy, that guy's a beast, that's all I can say. And he actually loaded it himself into our car. He's like, oh, I can just get it. So he just grabbed it and put it in the car without struggling too much. I was really shocked. Then we got it home, and then obviously this is in my basement, so we had to move it downstairs, which was definitely a struggle, but it's here now, so let's look at it. It's in really good shape. It has the remote as well, which is cool. This TV has a lot of cool features. I just kind of got it, so I'm not going to... This probably isn't going to be the best guide i guess the whole point in these videos is if you're like looking to buy one of these then let me grab the remote here then you kind of just know what you're getting into if you do are planning on getting one of these you're going to need at least two people minimum and that's if you're not moving it up or downstairs down up or downstairs you're going to need three people i would say or two just insanely strong people which i am not so that was kind of one of the issues <laughs> so here's the remote it's pretty cool if I can get it to focus here. Um, okay, there we go. It's like a kind of a joystick feature. There's a twin view option as well on this TV. Click it here. And then so this would be, you could plug in like a video game console and you could plug in like a DVD player. So you could be like playing video games and watching movies at the same time. And you can like increase the size of one and then you can like choose which one the audio comes out a lot of stuff like that it's pretty cool not the probably the most useful thing but still um let's see come on focus <laughs> okay and this remote also the little thing right here flips up and it gives you some more options down here i don't even know disc menu oh this might be if you're oh if that's if you're using it with a home theater which i am not doing at least not at the moment i'll get into that later um so yeah pretty nice remote really um picture's dim in here <laughs> okay so 
pretty cool. I was glad that it had this because I, regardless if it had it or not, I knew I was going to have to order it online. I'm like, I, I needed the remote because a lot of the features you can't probably do with just the buttons on the front. And speaking of them, here's our buttons on the front here. Got S video input, um, AV inputs, which is cool because I was, you know, I'm like, I was kind of testing everything out with this, trying different things because I heard, um, 480i um, or 240i or p or whatever like well, the nes resolution and all those older systems wasn't very good on these tvs um so i was i hooked an nes up just because i was testing it out and um it's cool so this port that's labeled mono if you're using a console like an nes that only has mono audio out then um you can plug it into here and it will actually come out of both speakers. And these speakers are like awesome. Like this thing literally sounds like you have a whole like surround system. Like the bass is incredible and it's really cool. But um, as I will explain later, I can't really take full advantage of it yet, but we'll get into that. And then here's the other buttons, like the menu and then you can navigate the menus. Um, this little things for the little Sony card reader. I forget what those are called. Just a few other inputs, which is nice in the volume and channel. So you could technically use the TV without the remote, but it's obviously nice to have. And then we have the matching stand. It just has a little glass shelf, and then it has like some room on the base. This is not how it's going to be. Like I just put these controllers here. I'm not exactly sure what's going to go here. But I do have something that I want to put here, and I guess I can get into that now. And the door isn't broke off, thankfully. And as you can see, this has the super fine pitch tube. My phone's really not focusing today. Okay, there we go. Um, so one of the major issues that I've had, well, I guess we could show the ports first, which I have my iPad here to, just because I can't even get behind it. It's so massive. So here's the ports, a picture of dying there. So this up here is your DVI port. So this is one of the, the 910 doesn't have HDMI. The 960 does. So that was kind of a compromise that I did make picking out this set. But with things like this, you know, you don't really get to choose what you get. It's pretty much just come what comes available unless you're insanely patient, which I'm not the most patient person. So I've been really struggling with this. So DVI, as you probably know, does not carry audio. It's made for like computer monitors and stuff like that. So there's really no need to carry audio. So at first I just bought one of those cheap little coupler HDMI to DVI, which is what I'm using right now actually to display this. Just to kind of use, test it out, you know. And then I went on Amazon and I ordered one of these. This is an HDMI audio extractor. So the purpose of this, or at least what it's supposed to be, your video signal goes in, your HDMI video signal, which obviously carries audio and video, then it comes out with um, aud with video, and then your audio comes out of these little RCA plugs. Um, but it doesn't work. <laughs> like, I get sound, but no video. So it's literally the reverse of we got going on here so i'd rather have video than sound so what people were recommending um and what a lot of people seem to be doing is they have a receiver that has hdmi in it and then they just literally use the audio from that and then output it to their the tv which that is a great idea i never thought of that i have um over there i have a receiver but it doesn't have hdmi it's like a pretty old one um, so I'm going to be on the lookout for one that has HDMI and it's going to go there and then we should be able to play HDMI consoles with sound So that'll be obviously a great feature to have so anyway, let's look at the ports finish it out. So Your DVI which obviously you can easily be converted to HDMI because it's basically the same thing your audio inputs for that um, and then Video in, you got S video, just millions of <laughs> inputs here. You got like three AV inputs on the back and then two S video. And then this is an output, this one right here. So you can output AV to another display. Your audio out, which I may end up using once I get the receiver. And 
Here's your two component inputs, which I have hooked up to the Wii, the PlayStation 2, and the original Xbox right now. And then I'm not sure what that says. I'm not even sure what these are. I don't think it's for headphones, even though they look like headphone jacks. I think it's for some something else. And then there's like some RF and some other things. Um, I don't know what that one is that says aux. I guess, could you put a converter on there and use AV? I'm not really sure. If you know about that, let me know. Not, not really sure. So, shut the iPad off now. That's all I needed it for. So, anyway, so I was, with this, I was kind of thinking like, okay, I'm not getting any video. The adapter must be broken. So I returned it and I got another one of the same thing and it does the exact same thing. So I don't know what's going on. And I even tried them on my flat screen and I still can't get them to work. So I don't know if this adapter is just terrible or what the deal is. If you have another solution out there, definitely let me know. I'm thinking of just going the receiver route um, to get audio split from the HDMI. I mean, it just sounds like it would be the easiest thing, but if you have an easier solution, let me know. Cause I seriously would consider really anything at this point. So, um, yeah, so this thing, it, it is really cool. And, you know, being someone who really likes CRTs and everything like that, like, obviously there's really no reason to play the switch on this BI beyond the uh, fact that there's no motion blur and, you know, uh, there was another reason that I can't even remember, but the main reason is the motion blur for me. Um, yeah. And it, it does look really good. Like I've been playing it. I've had this set up for probably about a week now and I was hoping to get the adapters and everything before I made the video and have audio, but it just didn't work out that way, I guess, but it's all right. We'll get it. And I might even make a video when I get the receiver, if that's what I decide to actually do. Um, I'm gonna just hold out and try to get one cheap because I see them all the time at like yard sales and stuff. And I've almost bought them several times just to upgrade what I already have, but um, I just haven't picked them up. But yeah, this thing's awesome. And I'm gonna get something hooked up in so we can look at the, the dual screen mode just cause I think it's kind of cool. And I actually haven't even really messed with it yet. So let's see how that looks. All right, so there we go. We got the Nintendo and the Nintendo Switch hooked up at the same time. So you can play Mario Kart and Battletoads at the same time. Don't know why you do this, but you can. Just kind of wanted to show off the feature here. So as you see, as I flip over, so that would be like, if the audio was actually working on HDMI, then you'd hear the Mario Kart. So hop over here and you hear the Battletoads and you can increase the sizes and decrease. And then you can simply just go to an input and click on it and it'll literally just fill up the whole screen. So very cool. Um, I haven't really thought of anything yet that I would use it for, but it's pretty cool. And while we have the Nintendo up here, I just kind of wanted to talk about the um, 240p performance here. I don't know why I couldn't remember that earlier, but because um, everyone talks about lag on these TVs with every um, with every video signal quality, and so for. Um, 240p, yeah, it would definitely was noticeable, but I was still able to beat the Turbo Tunnel on Battletoads, so... And there's obviously no scan lines on these. So, for something like the Nintendo, there's no reason to own this. I mean, you don't... I love... That looks 10 times better than this for, like, anything 240p, 480i, you know. You really want... This, the whole point of an HD CRT is for HD, so there's really no reason for this. I did want to try it out, though, and it wasn't as bad as everyone makes it out to be, but, yeah, if you, you know, could choose a CRT for, like, this kind of game, yeah, you're definitely going to want to go for something a little, little bit older and just, you know, anything standard definition, really, I mean, so, but as you can hear, the audio is coming out of both speakers. You might not be able to make that out, but that is the case because I have it plugged into the mono port down there. I thought that was kind of cool. I've never heard of that or heard anyone talking about it. It would really only be useful for like the Nintendo or like a plug and play or something. Um, you can go twin view and you can actually have two of the same things. You could basically just go to either side then you just hit the input button, wherever it is, yeah, right here. And you can actually just switch. So obviously you could have any input you want here. You could have the 
two we're actually using. Um, yeah, so there was a little bit of input lag, but again, it, it wasn't as bad as people make it out to be, I don't think. I mean, maybe I just, I don't know, maybe I'm just not good at noticing it, I guess, but, um, but there was, there's some setting, I forget what it's called, it's like H something, I don't know, I went into the service menu like everyone says to do, and I disabled it, because I was feeling a little bit of input lag, even on 720p, which is what the Switch is running at right now, because it doesn't support 1080i. Um, and that did how that did. I mean, it made it perfect. So the switch, like anything 720p 1080i, I really didn't feel any lag at all. Just these really old 240p consoles really are the only thing that I could really see that had lag. And I'm assuming 480i would as well. I haven't really tried much 480i, but um, yeah, so I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need to say. I don't really think there is, but if you're considering one of these things... Just know what you're getting yourself into. It is it is heavy. It's heavier than, you know, don't think about it as, oh, everyone says it's heavy. It can't be too bad. It, it, it is. I mean, it's insanely heavy in my opinion, but it's definitely worth it. If you have the room and you can round some people together, it, it's, it's cool. I mean, it really is a unique experience. And I may even make another video about this set as if it was could you daily drive this as your only TV? I really, so far, I would think you probably could, but I don't know. Um, and I did, another thing, if you're thinking about getting one of these, the geometry is very, like on these, it's, it's hard to find one that's good. Luckily, mine is pretty good. The edges are not as good as the center. Like the center is crystal clear. The left and the right edges are definitely a little bit blurry once you get pretty close to the edge. And it's really only noticeable, like, if there's, like, text, like, if your lives are up there, like, in the upper left or something. That's the only time it's really noticeable. Um, so, when you're getting one, definitely check for that, because if it's really out of whack, I would personally just leave it. But it's really up to you. All right, well, if you enjoyed this video, thanks so much, and... I'll be back probably with some more CRT um, purchases, I guess. But anyway, thanks again for watching, and have a great day.